greatest defenders, greatest defenders don't know too much about defenders. I'm being honest, except for Kobe, Michael Jordan, you do what I'm saying, Tim Duncan, motherfucking Kevin Garnett, Draymond Green, Dennis Rodman, Ben Wallace, not too much, but I heard he was a defensive menace, four-time defensive player of the year, Dwight Howard, four-time defensive player of the year. Uh, Rudy Gobert, he got exposed badly, so you can't really put him in that category. But you get my gist. Don't really know too much about him, just know the run around. Let's just get straight to it. 15 best defenders in NBA history. Before we get started, we hit 370. You did what I signed. Next goal that quick, you know what I'm saying? 380, that fast. Dexter, I mean, road to 380. Now let's get this bit to a smooth five likes, my brother. Draymond Green recently it. praised himself as the best defender to ever play, which caused a Man. lot of turmoil in the NBA world. Well, we decided popping. to chime in and offer our take on Draymond's Yo, place among the all-time defensive greats and answer if he's even the best in today's game. Here are the 15 best. Now, nah, shout out. Let me last time pause. Is most likely not, but shout out Eddie Thomas. He explained this shit very, very well. He said... To be an all-time great defender, your defense has to sh uh, shift change within a team. Draymond is not that at all, and it showed. You see what I'm saying? He had a whole a whole year to himself, and they were the bottom list. Like, they were the last seed. You see what I'm saying? Whereas, like, Kevin Garnett, uh, that 2003-2004, when they made Western Conference Finals, solely depended on him. Like, if he if he was making a mistake on his defender, it was most likely because somebody else was. And he had to he had to uh, advocate for their mistake. You see what I'm saying? But best yeah, defenders that's, that's in NBA amazing. history. I think it's order. KG personally. Either KG or Dennis Rodman. Gary Payton. Other than MJ, Gary Payton is the only guard to win the defensive player of the year award and the last wow. guard to do it. Gary got nicknamed the glove because of how close he stuck to his Damn. man. He was a defensive dynamite and he routinely made opponents' lives miserable every time he decided to put down the clamps on somebody. Peyton made he's every defensive first shit, team from bro, 1994 right? to 2002, like shit, and he's tied with MJ Garnett and Kobe for most first-team all-defense selections. Wow. Scottie Pippen. In all the highlights, How many? you never just saw me. You saw Scottie Pippen Nine? in every championship I won. Michael yeah. Jordan said in the first seconds of his Hall of Fame speech, it was really fair to say that because Scotty was the perfect Robin to Michael's Batman. Six foot seven with long Too arms and extremely a agile. Now, Scotty would not only guard the best player on the opposing team, but also Too switch on to everybody now. else during the same play, possession after possession. From ball pressure, disrupting passes, taking charges or blocking shots, you name it, Pippen did it on a high level. Scotty was the best perimeter player in the game during the 90s. He racked up 10 all defensive selections, wow. and he's top seven all time in steals. Wow. Ben Wallace. Big Ben's basketball journey is not similar to any other player on this list, considering he went undrafted in the 1996 NBA draft. Standing at six foot nine, everybody always believed he was undersized for a center, and considering he was never a good he's offensive athletic. player, he didn't get much playing opportunity early on. But that all changed when he got to Detroit in 2000. In six years with the Pistons, Wallace proved to be one of the toughest defensemen who ever played in the league, with four Defensive Player of the Year awards in a six-year span. Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman was a physical, I annoying pest, always playing on the edge of a foul in a fight. He didn't score the ball, and he wasn't interested in being an offensive player. All he cared about was rebounding and defense, and he did those things to perfection. Rodman was a huge reason why Jordan couldn't get past the bad boy Pistons in the 80s and why he won three championships after his first retirement. At six foot seven, Rodman was incredibly strong and so well conditioned, and he would always give his best effort in guarding the best opponent's players. And he guarded everybody from Jordan and Karl Malone to even Shaq, and he was successful against all of them. The Worm made seven all defensive first teams with two defensive of the year awards along with seven rebounding titles. Dikembe Mutombo. Mount Mutombo didn't get his nickname because it was easy to score over him. You had to be a really high flyer to soar over that particular mountain of a man. And more often than not, Dikembe would finger wag a big no-no in your face. Mutombo was second on the all-time blocks list. Ah. Behind only Hakeem Olajuwon. And he'd probably eclipse Hakeem if he started his NBA career earlier. 
Dikembe's NBA debut happened at the age of 25, three Whoa. years later than Hakeem. Still, in his 10-year prime, Matumbo managed to win four Defensive Player of the Year awards, tied for most in NBA history. This Tony is a lot tied for number or four uh, Defensive Players ever. Tony Allen? Allen? On the basketball court, Tony Allen was a dog, a Seriously? junkyard dog who had attitude and who wouldn't let go ever. If you were his defensive assignment for the night, Tony would hound you, hound you, and probably bite you if it was allowed, just so you don't score on him. He wasn't an offensive threat, and his livelihood depended on his outstanding defense, and he played the heck out of it. He coined the term grit and grind, which became the mantra for his Grizzlies teams. And during that time, he made six all-defensive teams. Nice. But his biggest credentials came from the mouth of two of the best scorers to ever play. Both Kobe Bryant and Kevin Durant said that Tony Allen was the toughest defender wow. they ever played against. That's, that's and that's definitely huge. saying something. Yeah. Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. There are not very few people that will rattle LeBron James when they're subbing in the game, but Kawhi was one of them. Kawhi made a name for himself during the 2013 and 2014 NBA Finals, where he emerged as the LeBron stopper and earned the nickname the Claw. Along with the finals MVP oh, he trophy, it that year? with extraordinarily long arms and one of the biggest hands in NBA history, Ooh. Kawhi often made other NBA players look like little children, as he would simply snatch the ball from their hands like it's nothing. Leonard made six all defensive teams, with two Defensive Player of the Year awards in 2015 and 2016. Kevin Garnett. Yeah. Kevin Garnett is a seven I personally think he's the greatest. Like, he's a seven footer that moves like a guard. That could guard any position. Like how? How is he not the greatest? Somebody, I personally thought, I, I thought it was a Dennis Rodman at first, but somebody said, and I got to do my own research, I know, but somebody said there were holes in his defense. He was more so just a good rebounder. But Kevin Garnett, I would personally say he was the greatest defender of all time. Personally, me personally, and yeah, he said, uh, uh, shout out Eddie Thomas one more time. He said, um, you know, your defense, it can't be really individual. You see what I'm saying? Like, it can't only individually affect you. But Kevin Garnett, it didn't really only individually f affect him. He took him to the, to the farthest they've ever been. Who moved on so, the basketball floor? I, I personally think it's five, KG. And he personally. could effectively guard all five positions. When he dropped his posterior in a basketball stance, he looked like some kind of alien with those freakishly long extremities. KG was also one tough SOB, and when he played basketball, he'd enter another dimension that's fair to describe as crazy. Garnett wanted to kill everybody who wasn't wearing the same jersey as he did, and he was always extremely physical on the defensive end. A defensive Swiss Army knife, Kevin is top 20 all-time in both blocks and steals. He's made 12 all-defensive teams, tied for second most ever, and in 2008, he won his only Defensive Player of the Year award. Michael Jordan. Even though he's mostly known for his offensive Ugh. dominance, Jordan was equally good on the other end of the floor. Michael was extremely Ugh. fundamentally sound. He always had the correct hand in the passing lanes, and his footwork was phenomenal. On top of the fact he was an athletic demigod with a pit bull mentality. MJ led the league in steals three times, and is currently third on the all-time steals Ugh. list, and also an all-time blocks leader for a guard. Jordan what? made first team all defense, a record tying nine times highlighted with the Defensive Player of the Year award in 1988, Kobe Bryant. Yes, sir. Just like Michael Jordan, Kobe is much more known for his offense, but in his prime, Mamba was a spectacular defensive player. Strong, quick, and fundamentally sound, Bryant was always guarding the best opposing player in his early career, and he took great pride on that side of the ball. A basketball nerd at heart with a relentless attitude, Kobe wanted to be the best defensive player he could be, and he could shut down anybody when he wanted to. I still remember how perfectly Kobe played LeBron down the stretch of the 2013 All-Star Game. Even though Kobe was 34 at the time, and LeBron was the best player in the game, was sweet. Bryant locked Fuck him up out of here, and nigga. the W for the West. It's Kobe, bitch! You what kind of terrier he was on D. Fuck. With 12 all-defensive selections, Mamba is tied with Garnett for the second most of all time. Draymond Green, hey, which you tells you what kind of terrier he was on D. With 12 all defensive selections, Mamba is tied Whoa. with Garnett for the second most of all time. Wow. Draymond Green. Lock in the current NFL Sunday ticket. Who, who's first? If I had to guess, Timmy game. D. If 
I had to guess. Every what sets Draymond Green apart as a defender is his incredible IQ and knowing tendencies of the opposing coaches, as well as the not only defensively, he's just. I personally think Draymond is the most, even though he does stupid shit, he's an actual like good basketball player. Like overall, his his IQ is insane. Players he's facing. I think he's Although a very underappreciated six six, player. He's incredibly sturdy. And you'd probably push a fire hydrant easier than you'd push yeah, Dre you out of guard position. Anybody. He compensates for lack of height with a huge wingspan, which allowed the Warriors to play their death lineup with Green at the center. And Draymond is a big reason why every team in the league has started playing smaller guys at the five. Apart from anticipation and great understanding of positioning and opponents' offensive schemes, Green's biggest assets are his incredible reflexes and his lateral quickness. He's among the fastest players in the league when it comes to switching on D. And only the quickest guys can beat Draymond to the rim and lay it down without being blocked. So far, he's made five all-defensive teams, with uh, one Defensive Player of the Year award in 2017. Regarding the saying that he's the best defender ever, I could agree that he made the most out of his six foot six, yeah. not overly athletic body. Yeah. And that his ability to play a small ball center changed the game. But yeah, still, he can't teach height. And it's arguable if he is even the best defender in the game he's today, not, where athletic super freaks like Giannis, Rudy Gobert, or Ben Simmons <laughs> reign supreme. He's fucking not. Hakeem Olajuwon. It's not even a question. Michael Jordan picked Hakeem in his all-time starting five, explaining that as much as he was good on offense with his oh dream shape, Jesus that he was Christ. equally effective on defense. Hakeem is the only player on the top 10 all-time lists in both steals and blocks, leading the latter category with 500 blocks more than the next person on the list. Wow. Hakeem was a lockdown defender because he was a center in the body of a Wouldn't guard. Wouldn't be going to beat that. strong and athletic enough to battle Shaq down low and yet mobile enough to successfully defend on the perimeter. He was nicer than Dream Shaq, made though. nine all-defensive teams and repeated as the depoy in 1993 and 1994. Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard's career has fallen off dramatically since his back yes, injury yes. in 2011 and trade to the LA Lakers. Before that, he was one of the most dominant forces we've ever seen <sighs> at the center position. In his Orlando days, Dwight really was foot. a Superman, and he spent a lot of time flying through the air, either dunking everything in sight or blocking shots at the other end of the court. Jesus in his prime, Christ. he was one of the most mobile and most athletic centers ever, which earned him three consecutive Defensive Player <sighs> of the Year awards. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Most people wow. remember Kareem as the balding center for the Showtime Lakers, not realizing that he was already past his prime at that point. Yeah. When he had a full head of hair, Kareem never averaged less than three blocks per game. And if the league counted blocks three don't matter, four though. seasons, he would be the all- Seasons, you see what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. This is why Kareem will never be in my top five. He's right out of it. Honorable mention, however. This is why, though. Um... He had the entire 70s to run it. Season-wise, individually-wise, yeah, for sure. That's when that's where he got most of his MVPs. But he had literally 10 years to to dominate the league. I know he was put up with paired with a lot of, you know, bad lineups and things. And the only time he was successful is when he was paired with Oscar Robertson. But, I mean, if we talking about greats, this is why I say it's levels to this shit. I mean, look at Kobe. You see what I'm saying? Kobe had Pau Gasol. And Pau Gasol wasn't Pau Gasol before he came to the Lakers. He had Andrew Bynum, role player. He had Lamar Odom, role player. You see what I'm saying? He had Derek Fisher, role player. You know what I'm saying? Do I got to keep going? Okie dokie, Trevor Ariza, role player. Uh, 2010, Ron Artest, role player. You see what I'm saying? Uh, you get my gist. Nobody. So there's no excuse for just being anus. And I'm pretty sure a couple years, he didn't even make playoffs. So, to me, that kills your case. That just kills it. All -time that's leader, just me. Not just in points, but also in blocked shots. This could also be said for Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain. Who were the yeah. best defensive players of the season? Bill 60s, Russell probably both have retired is without officially notching a block or a steal in the yeah. NBA. In his prime, Kareem was extremely agile and was such an advantage in size and it's length. Either, to he me, was it's one of the Bill toughest players to score against. Jabbar finished his career with four blocking titles and 11 all defensive selections. 
Tim Duncan. Yep, During his is. prime, the whole Spurs defensive strategy was to funnel guards and wings toward the middle, where Timothy Duncan would wait with his perfect positioning and a seven foot five well, wingspan, ISO. ready to deter any shot at the rim. Timmy's defense was flawless, and when he was still young enough, he could cover so much ground and turn any team into a top 10 defense by himself entirely. Wow. In the 2003 NBA Finals, Duncan averaged 5.3 oh. blocks in six games against the Nets in an absolute defensive masterpiece. Wow. He's the all-time NBA leader with 15 all-defensive selections. He's only one of five players that amassed over 3,000 career blocks. And it's really surprising that he never won the Defensive Player of the Year. He never did? Seriously? Wow. Nice. Well, well, well. Um, yeah, I stand on what I said. Maybe not Dennis Rodman. Because they say he was more so, his skill was more so in, of course, defense for sure. But his skill, his skill more so uh, lied in rebounding. Like, man, some of the numbers I saw this dude doing, bro, like, shh, bro, he's averaging, like, 19 rebounds in a season. Like, that's some that's some crazy, crazy shit. But I would say either KG or Bill Russell. Personally, you can't have any holes in your, in your defensive game if you're going to be the greatest of all time. I think that's very fair to say. You can't have holes. Like you got you you got to be able to adjust to any defensive scheme, not just like team wise, but individually. Like you you can't be put in an isolation or in a mismatch and get burned. KG never got. I mean, from the look of it, he was able to guard anybody, top of the key, uh, corner, wing, anywhere. You see what I'm saying? Near half court, anywhere. You see what I mean? He was never a liability in any way. Whereas Tim Duncan, laterally, he was not as fast as KG. So, so to me, I can't consider that a great, the greatest, maybe probably like top three. I think that's fair to say. But like, to be the greatest, that's just me. You can't really have no holes. But that's about it.